Uh, today we'll start with our last C. So these are the last set of three lectures, uh, which is the connection. And uh, uh, we will show you a live case study. In fact, I was part of that live case study while I was working at Larson and Tubro. You will get a clear idea of how one discipline or one situation or one professional cannot get innovation going on. It has to be a collaborative effort. It has to be a culmination of all the strengths of every discipline for innovation to happen. So these are those you know, important series for you to understand the innovation process. So we are very clear that you know, finally innovation is said to have been happened only if the user gets the benefit and a large number of users are really you know sort of happy with the type of product which has been designed and it solves their problem so the last c which is the connection becomes very very important in this product so what is connecting with the user back that is you done a design you did mass production you gave it back to the users and then the user said wow this is great and we get into you know large scale implementation and there is great user satisfaction and delight so in an innovation to happen you need to have great user satisfaction and delight so we can't use innovation against everything like innovative research. No, innovation is said to happen only when there is user satisfaction and delight. So that becomes extremely critical in our journey. We should not be in that confusion that we'll call everything innovation. It could be a creative idea or it could be a you know a cutting edge research, but it can't be innovative research till it has not reached the people for whom the work can be beneficial. Let us now focus on our LNT Z line. What are the four core pivots which worked over there? The first pivot was user focus and the users are different levels. There's one user who is the end user who is coming and filling petrol. The other user is the person who is actually filling petrol for you. Territory users are the users who are manufacturing the pumps, who are installing the pumps, who are distributing the pumps. So the primary user, the secondary user who is the maintenance guy and the person who is installing, all these levels of users are very, very important in the innovation cycle. So these, you know, uh, so when we say user focus, it is multiple levels of users, not just one person who is the end person who is using it. So now let us come to the problem. The problem given, you know, to us was, when I joined the company, in fact, they had saying that, oh, we are completely losing business. We have a serious problem in hand. No orders from the companies because LNT's product were expensive and was not having any big advantage over the competitors. So they realized that our products are not looking good. The realization was aesthetic. So let us go to IDC and hire a designer who can make the pump look beautiful. So they were only lacking, you know, uh, design a user friendly product. And then when I went into the company, I realized that's just not aesthetics and uh, user, user requirement. There's much, much more to innovation. So then what, uh, you know, the context was that LNT was manufacturing an electronic petrol pump. This is way back in 1988. In 1988, when we had only Maruti cars on the roads. Actually, Maruti car was just launched when we launched our petrol pump. Before it was only ambassador cars. It's that type of era. And I will show you the journey how we went forward. And the focus was that we need to design an electronic petrol pump. Earlier, what type of petrol pumps used to be there? Mechanical petrol pumps with those meters and all. Then what was the first thing which struck me when I went to LNT? It is a size, it is a financial muscle, and if it, it's the brand of the company. What will be your design focus when you design for a large company? What will be your design focus when you design for a small company? As soon as they realized that they needed a new look pump, they came to IDC. So they're very, very clear that they, they have to have the right manpower for the right you know, work. And then this is our division. Petrol pumps came under switchgear division. So this particular division was our R&D and we used to have different departments, very well organized and very well oiled. What happens in large companies like Lars and Tubro? They have very efficient product development and very efficient manufacturing and very efficient sales and marketing. All the models are there. When you do design, innovation by design, you have to look at the creative ideation part, which was missing. You have to look at completely out of the box product, which was missing. And you know, all the roles fell on me when I joined the company. So on top of it, the R&D head came and said that you need to reduce the cost of the product by 25%. So that, that was the main requirement they came up with. Then, you know, the product should at least last for five to six years in the market as a champion product. 
and the form and aesthetics of the product had to be strikingly different and you know new in the field because they were already out of business and co competitors had you know already have you know had great products so they need to do that and then they said don't change the hydraulics because hydraulics is already ready and if you change that it will take a longer time cycle if you change a lot of things your product life cycle will go up now if you look at these pitfalls what is interesting is there was nobody in the design section in the mock-up section the first one which you saw in our pitfalls for the innovation process whereas all other sections of uh, you know prototype making pilot production and mass production LAT was phenomenally good so there was a big advantage for me right you could start and come up with a great product idea and it will sail through all those stages but here I am sitting in a one of the best companies in the world who have all the other processes but are missing the design process. So as I told you today innovation if it has to happen it has to be across all the segments in the product. You have to have you know technology which should be contemporary and you know futuristic you must have excellent user interfaces your manufacturing has to be phenomenally good you would have very good management systems in place uh, we just had to make you know uh, incremental changes in the other sections to make them you know uh, come into the innovation flower and we i call this the sunflower model of innovation because if you take care of all aspects of the petal the petal will look towards the sun and that is looking towards the user and your you know you have innovation in your hand